Okay, welcome back to my new matplotlib tutorial. Uh, in the last video, I explained how you can visualize data with yeah, graphs that include data points with error bars. And now I would like to continue a little bit with data analysis and explain how you can actually plot data in the form of histograms. And instead of making a long introduction now, as usual, I would like to dive directly into the topic by creating a new Python file, which we call now tutorial file for .py. And as usual, we import our matplotlib pyplot splt. And then, of course, we want to present some, some small data set. So what we can do here is uh, just creating maybe a um, list with arbitrarily chosen values. So let's suppose 1, 2, 5, 10, 50, 100. Uh, just, just random values, more or less. And then we can write here plt dot and we don't use now plot or error bar, but we have to use now the function hist. And then we have to put in our list and then we can only write here plt show. And when we do, when we now run our script as usual, uh, then we can actually see already the output. And now you get, as you can see here, an histogram with three bars. And one is around 100. This is the last item in our list that we have added. Uh, then we have one around 50, which is the second last one. And then we have one, uh, or we have one bar here in the beginning where we have four entries. And this is a combination of all these four items that are here in this list. And the reason for that is that uh, it's because um, PyPlot, the standard configuration which PyPlot chooses for an histogram, if you don't specify how many bins it should have, it automatically creates a histogram with 10 bins. And of course, then all the first four items in our list are then plotted in the first bin. And uh, yeah, of course, um, in some cases, maybe it's, it's useful to have it like this, but um, of course we want to be a little bit more flexible. So what we can also additionally provide is the number of bins with the argument bins. So let's suppose now instead of 10, we want to have 100 bins. And uh, we do that and we can see now uh, that all bars have the same height of one, which means that in every bin we have maximum one entry. And the first two values you can see here and then uh, the number five is here, uh, then the fourth one is here, this is 10, and then 50 and 100 is here. So now we have a quite, not uniformly distributed histogram because they have different distances, of course, but at least no bar has more than one entry at the moment. And of course, this is now blue color. Maybe, uh, maybe if you don't like this color, I would also like to show now briefly how to change the color and uh, this, for this we have to use the argument face color. And if we write an R here, then it means now it will be red. But however, maybe this is too prominent and you would like to have it a little bit more decent, uh, that it's not so eye-catchy basically. So what we can do, we can define a so-called alpha value additional. And um, yeah, if we write here alpha zero and we run it, we will see now there are no bars at all because alpha represents the transparency and now we have a transparency of 100%. If we write here of a value of one, we have no transparency at all. And you can see now the result looks exactly how it looked before. So what we can actually do is maybe writing here 0 0.5, which is an average value. And then you can see that now it's looking much more decent and I think also more beautiful compared to before. And then one other argument, which, I, which is also important, I would like to show now. And this is called normed. Now, when we now run our script, we can see that uh, uh, all the bars have a maximum height of 0 0.16666 and so on. And uh, this is because normed stands for normalized histogram. And this is especially important when you deal, for example, with probabilities uh, or probability density functions, uh, because what it basically does is dividing the height of each bar by the area or by the number of entries in your histogram, which is the which is the area under your bars, basically. Yeah, so in this case, we have um, six data points, so six entries, and one divided by six is exactly 0 0.1666 and so on. So now uh, we have, again, still the same height, but normalized with the number of entries. And when you sum them all up now, 
then you get exactly a number of one. And this is, for example, as I said, for probability density functions important, because when you calculate the integral of your histogram, it should not exceed one, since the probability can also not exceed one. And this I would like to um, discuss a little bit further now by um, showing how such, how random numbers would look like in a histogram. Yeah? So let's suppose we, we pretend that we throw a dice 100 times. So we basically create now a um, simulation of a dice. Of course, we will not throw a dice 100 times. So what we want to do is creating random numbers. And for that, we use again our uh, famous NumPy package that we have used several times before. And um, this has a random generator implemented. So let's suppose we want to have a uniformly distributed histogram uh, uh, because when you throw a dice, you will get this basically. So we have to adjust here our data according to that. So we, we don't put in our own values. Now we use NumPy to create uh, random numbers with the randint function. Uh, this stands for random integer. And what we can now put as arguments inside is um, the lower limit of the numbers of what we want to create, which is basically one for normal dice. And um, the upper value would be six, but um, run int works like this, that, uh, that you have always have to add plus one to the upper limit. So in this case, we have to write seven. And then we have to tell the, the function how many data points we want to have. So let's suppose in this case, 100. Now the size of our array will be 100. And now we also don't have a list anymore, but we have a NumPy array, which does not matter. Now we can just treat it in the same way how we have done it before with the list. But it's only good to know because we can do some additional things with that later. So now we want to have, of course, only six pins uh, because we, we have basically uh, yeah, six possibilities for a normal dice. And maybe we also don't want to normalize it anymore. And when we now plot that, then we can see now here a quite somehow uniformly distributed histogram. Uh, uh, maybe I can run it again because we have a random seed. So now it looks a little bit um, different. And when we run it even one time more, I think it will look different again. Yes. So uh, yeah, this works very fine. Maybe we can increase the number a little bit to get more statistics. So let's suppose I think it's fast. So we go up till 100,000. And now you can see it's getting even more uniformly distributed. Yeah? The, the relative error gets smaller the more times we throw the dice. Uh, let's suppose we take 1000 times. So then you can still see some changes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, fine. This is, uh, this is working very well. So maybe we could stop now here, but I would also show a little bit more uh, types of beautification that you can add. Yeah? So let's suppose you want to show how, what is the, how many entries are inside, um, what is the mean value, what is the standard deviation and so on. And um, uh, PyPlot does not have such a function implemented, no? not like root, uh, which, where you can take the mean and the standard deviation directly from the histogram. So here in this case, we have to, um, take it from NumPy. Yeah? So the advantage is now we have a NumPy array already. If we have a list, then we first have to convert it to a NumPy array. array. But now in this case, we have a NumPy array already. So we can write here mean, and then the function is uh, mean, and the standard deviation there we can write STD. So um, yeah, now we can actually uh, put in uh, before we show the plot, uh, before we show the histogram, we have to write plt.text, uh, which implements text in our histogram. And then we first have to define the x coordinate. So we can maybe have a look where we want to show the data. Let's suppose the x coordinate should be 4 and the y coordinate should be 125. So we can write here 4, 125. And then the text, which is basically a string. Yeah? So first we have to convert this double, which we get here into a string. So we can write here mean. And when we plot that, we can see here our 3.49, uh, which is basically uh, the mean value of a dice, which you throw. Yeah? It should be uh, 3.5 exactly, but of course we have a limited amount of statistics. And maybe we also want to write uh, mean in front so we can do it in such a way and now we can we can see that and uh, then the next step would be to also um, yeah we with this backslash n we create a new line 
So now we also want to uh, insert, um, yeah, let's call it STD for standard deviation. And um, then we have to write the same here, str std. And when we now run it, now we can see we have the mean value and we have the standard deviation. Maybe one thing in order to improve the layout a little bit more is to shrink the number of digits that we have. And for that we can easily, uh, yeah, and this we can easily do by writing here format. And then uh, we can write here actually as a string dot 2f, which means that now we want to only show two digits, uh, two decimals. Yeah? And now we can also write here format x standard deviation and uh, dot 2f. Yeah, and now it looks it looks much better. Yeah, maybe we can we can make it a little bit lower in our histogram in, in, a, in a lower place, and then here we can uh, we can edit. Okay, and maybe we also want to show the number of entries in our histogram. So we can also add another value here, which we call entries. And uh, yeah, for that, we have to write then str len x for the length of the, of the uh, array that we have here. And then we can actually uh, add here one more backslash n to put this in a new line. And now we can see, uh, yeah, all related um, important parameters which are related to a histogram in directly shown here and then you don't have to write it in the caption of your publication thesis or whatsoever yeah. okay so i think these are the fundamental basics okay let's also add some title to that um, let's call it just histogram uh, x label number plt y label mm, plt y label entries uh, so I think this would be now yeah, a perfect histogram, um, which you could, uh, yeah, which you could can easily reproduce and uh, yeah, which you can also modify according to your requirements. But as I said, next time we will continue a little bit with that and I will explain how to actually create some, uh, yeah, some normal distributed histogram together with a fit. And maybe we can also add a few more things to that to uh, in improve the layout. Okay. Um, by that, I would then uh, like to close my video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then uh, please hit the like button, um, subscribe if you have not done so far and if you are interested in seeing more of these videos. And um, yeah, then hopefully see you soon.